narrated by Ryan McElonen and Eli Ornstein. One farmer looked at this and said, we used to own our slaves, now we just rent them. This 1960 documentary shed light on the inhumane working conditions endured by the people who harvested America's food. In a survey in 21 states conducted by the National Council of Churches, the migrants themselves listed the evils of labor camp life. Bad housing, flies, mosquitoes, dirty beds and mattresses, unsanitary... Americans were shocked. Surprisingly, 50 years later, little has changed. Workers in North Carolina and many other states continued to endure dehumanizing conditions. 80% of the fruits and vegetables we eat are picked by hand, but most of us are unaware of the story behind the people who pick our food. It's the story of poverty, hardship, and exposure to dangerous chemicals experienced by 2-3 to three million workers who make the lowest annual income of any U.S. wage and salary worker. In 2012, Wake Forest University conducted a study of farm worker housing conditions in North Carolina, the largest study of its kind in the southeastern United States. It revealed that every one of the 183 camps studied contained at least four violations of housing law. Researchers found rampant infestations of roaches, rats, mice, and non-working showers and toilets. I think it's very sad because many people would say in like the greatest country of the world and yet the people that feed us have like the worst living conditions. Christina Vasquez works with the Student Action with Farm Workers organization at the North Carolina Justice Center. They practically have no rights. Um, and like when we like we're trying to like fight for their rights and it just seems like so hard. We think about pesticides on our food. Imagine what it does to the people who work with it all day long. We go out to labor camps and we talk to farm workers about their rights regarding pesticides. So we talk to them about pesticide exposure and how they can protect themselves from pesticides. There has been many cases where a lot of the workers have complained that they've um, they felt symptoms for pesticide poisoning. In one of the few publicized cases, several female farm workers exposed to pesticides gave birth to children without limbs. A study by Human Rights Watch found that pesticides are ten times more harmful to children than adults. Your hands, when you're like, at the end of the day, um, they were all sticky, and like, you barely could touch it, like feel the actual skin. You could just feel the, the moist and the skin chemicals. When there's little kids like picking blueberries, sometimes they don't know that the, the blueberries have pesticides on them because when they spray the blueberries. So a lot of kids tend to um, pick blueberries and eat them at the same time. So they're basically swallowing pesticide residue. Yes, children. They pick our food too. Approximately 400,000 of them are exposed to pesticides as they work in America's fields on a daily basis. I think it's great that youth are getting involved with this because like I mentioned earlier, not a lot of people know about these problems uh, farm workers are facing, especially in their own state. So I am actually pretty happy and proud to be part of SAF. And about 85% of all of our um, fruits and vegetables are harvested by hand. Um, so even there are a lot of organizations at both Duke and UNC and other universities where folks are organizing around these issues and coordinating panels and events and trying to raise money and raise awareness. So the point is to really think about what you believe, um, what your morals and values are, what you see as important in life. There are a certain group of people who are really passionate and really dedicated to solving this injustice. You know, come on, like, there, this happens in North Carolina. You're watching Focal Point from WRAL News. WRAL in Raleigh brought the problems of the farm workers to the attention of the North Carolina Commissioner of Labor, Cherie Berry. 
Her department is charged with promoting the health and safety and general well-being of all the state's workers. I pointed out the things that needed repair and the oppressive heat. It can always be better, David, but I can show you people who aren't migrant workers who live in conditions that are worse than that. Barry's response to the harsh living conditions of farm workers should come as no surprise. By law, she is supposed to protect the health and safety of North Carolina workers, but Barry's main contributions are coming from the very corporations that she should be regulating. Her number one campaign contributor in the last election was the North Carolina Farm Bureau, and her third and fourth largest contributors were R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company and the North Carolina Port Council, with other major contributors including the North Carolina Growers Association and Smithfield Foods. When SAF and other farm worker supporters asked Labor Commissioner Barry to restrict growers from using 12 and 13 year old children in the fields, Barry said no, as did her contributors. Government right now should not be doing anything to put any more burden on farmers or other businesses. Showing her the quality of life of workers at one of the labor camps we visited in Nash County didn't sway her. I've got to tell you, Commissioner, I wouldn't want my dog sleeping in that. And this meets state standards. Mm -hmm. WRAL failed to sway her. The Charlotte Observer did not sway her, but you can. I think, um, a lot of people, younger people, especially when they're in like universities or colleges or whatever, they have a big voice, um, just like around their campus. Like if they just like get the word out, like um, just like have show like awareness of of what really goes on, like where our food comes from, um, like how poorly most farm workers are treated. And like when we like we're trying to like fight for their rights and it just seems like so hard.